if it works. All right, are we on? This is a shout out to Seb, right? We're going here. All right, so everyone shout out. We got this. All right, good. Thanks, guys. So you do not have to take notes on this at all if you don't want to. Okay. This, some of this is just review. Some of this, um, I don't even know. I want you guys to think about the best way you learn and what's best for you at this point. Okay? So we're just going to start with um, infinite <coughs> sequences. Infinite sequences versus infinite series. And I know you guys did this last year, right? Please? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> and infinite series. This kind of looks like 3D without the 3D glasses, right? <laughs> All right. So infinite sequences and infinite series. So let's start with part one, um, infinite sequences. And I need you guys to keep these very separate in your heads. So an infinite sequence is um, what? Two, four, six, eight, right? You have some rule. What is your domain? Uh, it's very specific. Zero. Yeah, so it's positive integers. And sometimes zero, but mostly not. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Okay, so the domain is positive integers, and you are given some rule. It could be like um, uh, f of n equals 2n plus 1, right? And you just plug in 1, and then you plug in 2, and then you plug in 3, plug in 4, <coughs> and uh, we say the a sub n is the general term <coughs> of your um, sequence. Easy stuff, right? Just, just kind of review um, from last year. Uh, now we can take the limit of infinite sequences. Did you guys do that last year? You did. Okay, good. So we can take limits. I'm going to erase this. Yeah. So if I want to take the limit um, as n goes to infinity, well, uh, just do stupid thing. Right. So it's it's sort of like what we've just been doing. You guys have been using x, and the domain's been all real numbers. This is different. Now we're using n, and the domain is positive integers. Okay. So it kind of works the same, though. This is not continuous. It's skipping. But as n goes to infinity, the way we think about those real um, functions works the same here. What is the limit as n goes to infinity? What, is, what value does this approach? One. One, yeah. Done. Just like that. So all the rules we've been talking about for finding limits is the same. They're the same. Okay. Alrighty. And um, now you kind of think about this, and what's happening is as you are graphing them, this, this is a discrete, discrete function. You have a bunch of dots. And the idea of a limit is you're approaching some value L. Right? <coughs> and as you... And this is kind of like those delta epsilon proofs you guys did last year. After some n, then all the values are going to be in this band. It's going to be L plus epsilon or L minus epsilon. So they all are going to start to live in here. And that's when you know that there's a boundary. Now, you can, have, you can actually go above and below as long as you're getting closer and closer. Because you can have in any point n, you can make this bound, this this um, band smaller. Mm. Conceptually, does that make sense, to you guys? Yeah. So, if you have, you can say that a limit exists for an infinite sequence if there's something called an um, upper bound or a lower bound or some kind of limit. So in this case, let's call this an upper bound. And then, you know, conversely, you can think of a lower bound. Right, where the points kind of come down, and they're discrete points, and we get to some limit L. All right. Any questions about that conceptual idea? Yeah, Alan. Um, you have like um, uh, a sequence where it's, it's like the, the odd numbers. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. 
or the even numbers, but if they when they both approach the same um, the same limit, but like the odd numbers do it faster. Someone give me a hand. Because it's very smart, yeah. you know, like <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> Laffy Taffy. Don't make me laugh. That all you have. Yeah, I know. Mr. Chair is hanging, he's not here, I'm stealing it. So um, you can have, so let's say you have something that oscillates. Like, I think you guys think about y equals um, sine x. Is there a limit to that function? No. no, very good. There's not because it oscillates and, you know, so there's no limit, right? But with sequences, you can actually have trig functions in your sequence, and it can, you can have a limit if the um, odd terms and even terms both approach the same L. Then that infinite sequence has a limit. Can you give an example of that? Yeah. So this one is continuous. What if I used um, like negative one to the n? So a sub n, I have to change up my notation because I'm not talking about um, a continuous function anymore. So a sub n is negative one to the n power. So you see what's gonna happen with the odd and what's gonna happen with the even terms here. What's gonna happen? When n is one, what do I get? Negative one. Yeah. What happens when when one. n is two? One. One. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys are like Mr. Jenkins, insulting our intelligence. Sorry. I know. But do you see now that the odd terms will, will do not equal the even terms? Because I'm going to get this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. This one does not have a limit. Yeah. Okay. And so what happens sometimes when you see sine? You, as it gets, if you have, um, if you have sine n to the n power, let's see, over 1. Try that. I'm sorry, under 1. Try this one. So you plug in 1 to the 1 power, 2 to the 2 power, 3 to, you know, this to the 3rd power. What do you think that's going to approach? Is it getting? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's getting really small in the denominator, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it oscillates, it oscillates always closer and closer to zero. This value is getting <coughs> smaller and smaller and smaller. So one over really, really small. So you know, I mean, I just made that up off the cuff, but you know, just think about that and play around. You can actually have something that does oscillate that approaches um, an L from both the even terms and the odd terms. All right. So now, um, yeah. If you had a function like negative one to the n, where it goes kind of like this, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a, a sequence, uh -huh. say, um, could you say that the limit as n approaches on say one is negative one or no? Say it again. Could you say that uh, for, next, for a sub n equals negative one to the n? Could you say that the limit as n approaches one equals negative one, or can you not say that? As n approaches one. Uh -huh. Is negative one? Oh. Is that something you can say? No. Negative one. Yeah. 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 It, it, it. I mean. It, it, no, this, you can't. It's just right. So. So we don't have a limit because you know we're not. Like it's funny. We have to. Think, I mean, I love, I love that you asked that. We have to think about limits in a different way, right? right. We have to think about this. Discre these discrete dots approaching some L. So this actually is not true. So we have to think about this getting closer to some boundary, some ceiling, if you will. Okay. All right. So it's a good question. Um, now let's go move on to part two, infinite series. And um, let's do this one. So if you add up the 
terms of an infinite sequence, you get an infinite series, right? And we've done this before. So, um, how about this? N equals 1, 2, and then it gets to keep it simple. Something like that. So, if this were up here, a sub n equals 1 half to the n, when I was talking about sequences, it would be 1 half, comma, 1 fourth, comma, etc. But here, we have to add them, right? 1 half plus 1 half. Right? So, really, normally you think about a series as being one value. But here it's tricky because it's an infinite series. So we're going to say, does it have a value? Well, it can. Sometimes we have to take the limit and see what the limit is, and that's not necessarily the value. Or sometimes, superstar power for who can tell me about this particular infinite series? Yeah, Ramon, I see you kind of raising your hand. What is the value of that? How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Here, because you get right here, you get almost all of it, right? One half plus a quarter plus an eighth. Almost everything is in the first. If it really equals one, the rest of this. <clears throat> Why? What kind of special um, series is this? The one that. So the geometric. Uh, geometric, yeah. right? No wheel. <laughs> geometric series. And S equals what? A over. 1 minus r, or a is the first term not equal to 0, and r is the ratio. I'll give you a candy that for that one moment. Right. Here you go. Bye. Oh, sorry. Oh, what is the ratio between 1 and anyone? Yeah, so, exactly. So, so, we've got a few things to talk about before I say that. What we need to know is that r is the ratio from any term divided by its previous term, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1 for this to be true. Okay. And a is not equal to 0. So those three things have to be true for that geometric series for us to use this. Now, I'm just going to talk about two other things and I'm done, I think. Um, in your homework tonight, you're going to see the, ex the vocabulary word closed form. Um, oops, sorry, open form and closed form. <coughs> and it's a little tricky to get what they mean. They're both talking about infinite series, but an open form has, um, it looks like this, or like this, where the number of terms change along with the variable. So every time I have a new n, I have a new term. So that's an open form. A closed form is something like this, where you have a formula, an explicit formula to give you the answer. Or you have n in there, but it's, you don't have to add terms anymore. You've got in some kind of formula. Okay? So I think I'm going to stop with that. And let me just look around to make sure I hit everything. And this classwork is super, super crucial because a lot of the lesson is in the classwork, and you guys have the rest of the class to work on that, okay? Goodness, this looks like the most difficult. Yeah.